Hi everyone and welcome to our channel Fire Alert. In today's video, we will be discussing about different types of pumps being used in fire service. This classification will be based on the working mechanisms of the pumps. So first, we will learn about the positive displacement pump or the reciprocating pump. In a reciprocating pump, as you can see, there is a piston assembly which does an upward stroke and a downward stroke. So, in the upward stroke, it creates a low pressure region inside the cylinder area which causes the high pressure fluid from this side to open the NRV or the non-return valve A and rushes the fluid inside the cylinder area. So, uh, after this, the valve A automatically closes. Then again, during its downward stroke, it opens the NRV B or the valve B and pushes the fluid inside the cylinder outside. So this is how a reciprocating pump or a positive displacement pump works. Next, let's learn the working of an ejector pump. An ejector pump works based on the Venturi effect. For those who don't know, Venturi effect is the reduction in fluid pressure that results when a fluid flows through a constructed section of a pipe. For example, consider the illustration of an ejector pump given here. When the water is forced through the narrow section of a pipe, it increases in velocity and this, there is a reduction in pressure around here. So what happens in the ejector pump is that due to the reduced pressure in this region, the surrounding fluid is entrained into the propellant stream and then the propellant carries the surrounding fluid along with it. So this is how the ejector pump works. The next type is the suspended type ejector pump and as the name suggests, the pump will be suspended above the water line and propelled by the water supplied through standard instantaneous coupling. The next type of ejector pump is the submersible type ejector pump which are used in cases where you have to pump or suck out water from depths which are greater than the normal suction lift. In such cases, you cannot use the normal pumps. So here, the pump would be submerged in the fluid that we have to pump out and the ejector pump will be as shown in the diagram here. So here is the water inlet connection through which we introduce the propellant. At this converging section, due to Venturi effect, the pressure gets reduced and due to the reduced pressure, the surrounding fluid gets sucked into the propellant stream and carried out. Since this is a two-stage pump, there are two ejector nozzles, one over here and the other one here and hence the Venturi effect is applied twice. As the equipment is submerged in the fluid, the fluid gets introduced into the equipment through the suction inlets and of course it has a strainer fitted into the suction inlet to avoid any waste or other sized objects from entering the equipment and clogging it. The next step is the centrifugal pump and is currently the most widely used type of pump in fire service. The main parts of the centrifugal pump includes the impeller, here you can see a closed type of impeller. It is a rotor used to increase the kinetic energy of the flow. Then you have a volute casing which contains a liquid and acts as a pressure containment vessel that directs the flow of liquid in and out of the centrifugal pump. Then you have a shaft rotor which is a mechanical component for transmitting torque from the motor to the impeller and then you have the uh, pump casing again and the other parts. So how does a centrifugal pump work? The main key element of a centrifugal pump is the impeller. It has an eye at the midsection. It is through which the water flows in. It is mainly due to when you create, when you uh, prime a pump, it creates an initial suction at the eye of the impeller and it causes the water to flow in through it. And as the water gushes in, the rotating part of the impeller, as it rotates, it throws the water towards its periphery. And again, it creates a partial vacuum at the center, which allows more water to gush in. So this keeps on continuing. And the water being thrown to the periphery is being collected through the volute casing and it is thrown out. Again, as you can see in the diagram, there are two types. At the left, you can see a pump with without guide vanes and at the right side, you can see with guide vanes. The purpose of guide vanes is to increase the efficiency. As the impeller increases or decreases the flow of a substance through a system, guide vanes ensure that the substance is passed evenly and smoothly as possible. So that is the purpose of the guide vanes. And by that I think you have understood the working of centrifugal pump. And that's all for the video guys. Thank